What's up, guys, and welcome back to Just in Time. So it's been ages since I last recorded anything. Actually, it's, I think YouTube says it's been like nine months, and it has been a long time. I have a new setting. I think it's rather nice. Honestly, this is just for aesthetic. Like, this, this is just my piggy bank. <laughs> but I have been wanting to make a video for months and months and months now. Everything has been crazy. I've started a, my master's program, which I made a couple videos about in the past. So that has happened. I moved back to KL. Finally, finally got a room and everything. So this is the new setup. I think it's pretty nice and hopefully we'll see much more of it. So there's so much to update, but I think the most recent thing and the most, I think, current it's about this movie that I watched called uh, Everything Everywhere All the All at Once. I think <laughs> it's the Michelle Yeoh movie and uh, you know I went in it was very interesting because I didn't expect much from the movie. I uh, at first I thought it was a Marvel movie because it said multiverse. So I was like okay, multiverse means Marvel. And when I found out it wasn't Marvel, I was like shit. Then like now what? So do I still watch it or like so I did watch it and okay there's a lot of layers to this video so I watched it and I ended up crying my eyes out in the movie. I mean yes the movie is uh, touching you know at the end and stuff but I think there was a much deeper meaning to why I was crying and I'm gonna get into that. But yeah, in the end, I bawled my freaking eyes out like so hard. It was like, and I don't cry when, like I really, really don't cry. I've maybe shed a few tears in one movie and that's it. Like I don't cry in movies and I typically don't cry in real life toxic masculinity. But yeah, I think the only time I cry is usually out of anger, very, very rarely out of sadness. So I think that was kind of like indicative to me that, okay, it's time to go for therapy. I've been putting therapy off for quite a while already. So now I'm finally, I finally went and did it. I made the appointment, everything. So I'm going to have my first session later on in the month. So I'm happy about that as well. But I think the, the push, the biggest push was how, okay, again, my thoughts are everywhere right now. So I'm going to be like talking a little bit about the movie, a little bit about crying, a little bit about therapy. So hope that you guys can follow this flow. Okay, there are going to be spoilers ahead. So if you if you want to watch the movie, then just like pause this and go watch it or something. But like, I'm going to spoil the movie. So at the end, you know, there's a crescendo where all of the characters, the different timelines of the characters are coming together. But what I really, really appreciated was that they actually portrayed Michelle Yeoh as kind of like the quote-unquote father figure of the family. So she's the uh, breadwinner. She's the one doing all the work, doing all the taxes, the one that's always like fun now about all the money. And she's, you know, the one that's like hopping on the kid, trying to, she's playing both. Like, you know, she's showing the masculine characteristics of she's, you know, trying to provide for the family, uh, hustling for the family, and also the feminine traits of, you know, trying to nurture her daughter, who is very, very obviously not... Um, not the way that she she expected her to turn out to be. And at the end of it, the scene that really suddenly tipped me over the edge was when she, you know, she's just expecting her husband to fail because the husband is always trying to talk his way out of things. He's not really that aggressive, typical male figure that you'll see in a movie or in life, I guess. You know, he's always trying to soothe all of the, uh, what's, what's the word I'm looking for? soothe the conflicts yeah by talking properly you know finding a compromise and everything and michelle yo's character is like oh my stupid husband you know he's messing things up again because he's doing things like that and at the end of it he actually helps to ease all of the problems you know he found you know, middle grounds for everybody and michelle yo just went and hugs him and the husband breaks down and that ooh, tore my heart into a million pieces and i think it's kind of like I've, I've really identified with the uh, husband of the movie because I'm always trying to talk things out. I, I mean, I, I portray a very aggressive character. You know, I'm always like trying to be funny and like pick fights, but I would ra much rather, you know, settle things how he settled things, which is like talk things out properly. And to, to see the quote unquote, the father figure, which is Michelle Yeoh, embrace that character kind of acknowledge his efforts. I think that's kind of like what I was wanting, I guess. Uh, because I'm quite vocal about, you know, daddy issues. Yeah, guys can have daddy issues too. And I feel I have a lot of unresolved things with, um, uh, you know, achievements, uh, achievement-related stuff. So seeing that really, really broke my heart. And then also seeing how the mother, you know, Michelle Yeoh was trying to catch back the, the daughter because the daughter was this kind of like rebel 
and in the movie the daughter is gay so you know Michelle Yeoh obviously is very dif- is difficult for her to kind of like grasp what her daughter is in in the movie like huh? in the movie you know she she cannot accept that she's very uh, defiant that she's gay obviously so there's all of these struggles between you know that mother daughter struggle and then at the end of it the the daughter just kind of like pouring her heart out you know telling the mother like confronting the mother up front and i also felt like that was something that i i had always wanted to do you know like not confront but like speak what's really on my mind and i think that that embrace of the mother and the daughter you know them mending that relationship also i kind of felt like that's what i really really want as well um you know i want to mend my relationships at the same time you know that's a very big part of why i'm in psychology because i would hope to be able to mend the relationships of others so yeah that was that was kind of like why i cried but uh now going into like crying i think that you know i mean i have a lot of people actually who are like they they see crying as weakness and I've obviously I've tried really really hard to kind of like correct that mindset that cognition and sometimes I feel mildly hypocritical because I particularly don't really cry I mean when I was younger I was incentivized not to cry uh you know like my dad is always encouraging me not encouraging me uh, you know let's scratch that let's remove that part from the Let's say when I was much younger and I would get hurt and stuff, my dad would incentivize me by saying that, you know, it's a good job that you didn't cry when you got hurt. It's a good job that you didn't break down, that you just took it and, you know, you picked yourself back up. I think his, his main thing was that I'm picking myself back up and not just sitting there helplessly. But maybe I took it the wrong way. And also, you know, I had a lot of peers, again, when I was younger. Kids can be a-holes, honestly. Like, uh, I was laughed at a lot because I used to cry very, very, very often. And I think that, just being in that social environment of like other guys making fun of me when I cried when I was a kid, I, gu- I guess, you know, in the end, I, I'm like, okay, don't cry in public, bro. So yeah, I don't cry. But I think that when I finally do cry, it's very indicative of like, there might be something there that's unresolved. And I think in general, when people are crying, again, I don't like to make generalizing statements. This is my opinion, is that when people are crying, I think it kind of reveals something that, you know, is there. Maybe they, they didn't know is there or maybe they're not acknowledging it or maybe they're very actively pushing it away. But I think when you do finally cry, maybe that's kind of like it bubbling to the surface, finding its way out. Now. And so for me, I took that, I took this time when I was crying as that, as like all of the issues that I was facing and maybe, you know, choosing not to acknowledge bubbling to the surface and now it's like okay you really need to take a good hard look at all these issues and really really sit down and deal with them so that's what i decided to do i again therapy everybody should go for therapy honestly there's no perfect human being everyone can benefit from therapy and there's many kinds of therapy so like seriously go and find a therapist please like but that is kind of like my journey of uh, why I decided to go for therapy recently. I am actually pretty okay sharing almost everything and anything. So like if I go for therapy and I have like breakthroughs and stuff, I would love to share them here. But yeah, I need to go for it first. So yeah, that was the my two cents, my take on that movie. Again, I found it very, very refreshing that I was able to cry so well, so badly, cry so well. I don't know. I had a really good cry in the movie. And yeah, that kind of led to me looking for therapy. I do hope that, you know, again, I always say that, you know, you hope that you don't have to reach that point and then only find help. But I think that, you know, everybody's journey is different. And until you kind of reach your personal tipping point, yeah, I don't think you're going to do anything about it. So yeah, I guess that's that. Thank you guys for tuning in. I will see you guys in the next episode. This was fun. You know, after nine months not doing anything, this is fun. So yeah, I look forward to seeing you guys soon. Uh, Do drop me comments. If you did watch the movie, let me know what you think about it. And if you are going for therapy and you want to share something, please feel free to share. So yeah, thank you guys. See you next time.